Hi, my name is Keith Brown, and I would like to walk you through our new HTML5 player. It's been in alpha for a little while. We've had a number of people uh, very graciously helping us test, and now we're moving it into beta, which means it's going to appear for everybody as their default player to give them a chance to use our, our new player. Um, all you have to do is just visit our website, um, make sure that this says currently using HTML5 player. If it doesn't say that and you'd like to try it, you can always click change and adjust it. And you can go back to the Silverlight player if you're having trouble with it. I want to make a brief note on how we're storing your player preference here. We're no longer storing it associated with your account. We're storing it on a cookie, which means it's, it, it can be different um, for each device, each browser that you're using. So just be aware of that. All right, so let's take a look at the player itself. Um, the first thing you're going to notice is that while we have a scrub bar on the bottom for the current clip and we're displaying the duration of the current clip and, and how far you are into it. There's also these bars up top, which are obviously indicating something. And it turns out what these are indicating is, is where you are in the entire course. Um, these bars are what we call our module navigation bars. And if I hover over them, you'll see that I'm showing web deployment here, miscellaneous topics. At the very beginning, we have an introduction view state and client ID mode. These are the names of all of the modules within the course. So what we're seeing here is that we now have a player that instead of just looking at one module of our course actually can play the whole thing all the way through, which is really nice. Um, because we're playing so much more content now within the player, we didn't really have a, a good way of displaying that on the left with all of the different clip names. That was getting sort of unwieldy. We needed a scroll bar there and it was getting kind of crazy. So we decided to shrink it up and just show you this visual element that shows you the modules. And if you'd like to see the clips inside of one of those modules, you just click one. So if we click here now, you'll get a little clip carousel that you can drag back and forth. Just kind of swipe it with your finger. Or if you're on touch or if you're on a mouse, you can just grab it with a mouse and swipe it. And you can also use these little um, buttons here that show up for um, um, scrolling back and forth. We're going to be prettying all of this up. Um, you'll, the player probably won't look like it looks today when you when you pull it up, but you know because it is still in beta. But um, this does let you see all of the clips within that module. That's the second module in the course. If you want to go to the third module, you just click, and you can see the third module there. And then you can just select any one of those clips. And if you click on it, turn off the volume there. If you click on it, you can see that as you're playing through the course. Um, your progress is being shown here. In fact, if I grab this, this scrub bar and drag it, if you look up at the top as I'm dragging this, you'll see that, um, that your progress through the course is increasing and decreasing as I move this scrub bar. Okay, That was something that um, a customer many customers requested was to be able to see progress through the entire course, and now you can do that. Um, another request that you might have noticed there is that as I play and pause, these little animations that come up um, don't stay on the screen forever like they did in our Silverlight player so that while I'm paused, I can actually see all the code on the page. And thank you very much for that suggestion, guys. So besides the play and pause button, which are pretty straightforward, and the volume button, um, there's also a uh, you know our little eight second skip back. If you click on that, it'll take you back eight seconds and continue playing, kind of like if you have a TiVo at home and you're used to that, it's the same function. You can move back a clip and forward a clip. You can disable autoplay if the kids come into the room and you want to kind of keep your place and don't let the course play all the way through. Just disable autoplay and then come back and start it back up when you're ready to go. Um, we show you not only the current clip that you're on, but every once in a while we'll also show you the next clip that's coming up. So that kind of just flips back and forth. And we've also added different quality levels. Um, currently, you'll by default, you'll be on a high quality setting. Um, you can change this to low quality if you're running over a lower bandwidth connection and you want to have a lower resolution video. Uh, it might give you a chance to actually watch the video. It might be a little, um, a little more fuzzy, but um, at least you'll be able to watch it. Now, you can really see, all that, see this if you go into an actual, actual um, rendering mode instead of scaled. In scaled mode, we're going to scale the video no matter what the resolution is to the size of the window. So you can make it as big or as small as you want. 
But when you go into actual mode, it's going to show the video at the size that it was rendered. So in low quality, you're going to see the video is small. In high quality, the video is going to be the size that it was rendered at. So you're going to get those crispest possible text. So if you really like crisp text, or if you're having a hard time reading, uh, reading the text on the screen and the code, be sure you're on high quality and in actual mode. And then it doesn't matter how big you make the window. Now, one of the things you're going to notice if you happen to be using Firefox is that the only choice you have in Firefox is a high quality mode right now. And that's because Firefox uses a different encoding of our videos, WebM. Um, it's uh, not as popular as the MP4 version right now, but we do support it because we do want to support Firefox. We do not have low and medium quality um, in WebM. So if you happen to be using a browser like Firefox that relies on WebM, you might not get the quality options. So if you want those quality options, try a different browser. In Chrome, you're going to get all of the options. Um, in Internet Explorer, I believe you're going to get the same. Firefox is the one where you don't have that option. Speed is the same thing. Speed control is only supported on certain browsers. Um, Chrome supports it, works really well. Um, iOS supports it as well. Um, I'm not sure if it's working on the iPad right now, but if it's not, I don't think it'll be hard for us to get it working. But some browsers like Firefox simply do not support speed right now. And I think it might actually be just a bug in the way the Firefox um, uh, video element is working. But if it's not supported, we can't support it either, and so we'll dim it out. So if you don't see the speed control where you want it, try a different browser and you'll very likely get it. We also have the option here to, to go full screen or not. And we do our best to work with the browser to make the browser full screen and also get rid of all of this Chrome. Another thing you'll notice is that when you drag our scrub bar in the HTML5 player, um, the video element is showing frames from the video at those different points. And our Silverlight player didn't do this. It would just sit there while you drag the scrub bar. So this is a nice improvement. Um, it may or may not work well on your machine, just depends on how fast your machine is and how it can how fast it can process video. One other nice thing that we've um, implemented in our HTML5 player is settings persistence. So a lot of you may have been frustrated that when you set your volume to a particular level, we weren't remembering what the volume was when you'd come and bring the player back up again the second time. That's no longer a problem with our HTML5 player. Um, not only your player preference, which player you're going to use, but also all of the settings that you've chosen here, like your volume level, your scaling, your quality, your speed, all of those things are going to be set in a cookie that's on your browser. So for each browser, you can have different settings. So if you're watching on your Xbox at home, um, you can have certain settings there. If you're watching um, you know, on your desktop, you can have different set of settings there. And we felt like that would make the most sense for you guys. Um, as usual, you can share. If you just click our little social sharing button there, you can share very easily, tweet about what you're watching, um, share it on Facebook. All right, well, thank you very much for listening, and I hope you'll give our new HTML5 player a try. Um, please do leave feedback on the blog entry here, and if you're having trouble, um, please go to support.pluralsite.com. Just surf there in your browser and open up a new ticket with us by filling out the Contact Us form. form. Um, that way we can help troubleshoot and go back and forth and start a conversation. Thanks again. Bye-bye.